Good morning. Good morning. This is the second week of Lent. Lent is a time where we focus on almsgiving, fasting, and prayer to bring us closer to God as Catholics. God calls us to use Lent as a time to get rid of things that pull us away from Him and we focus our hearts on the Lord. In the Gospel today, we learn about dealing with anger. Jesus teaches us that we must fix our differences with others in order to have hearts that are ready for Christ. This is especially important during this Lenten season. Think about a relationship that you might need to fix and allow Christ to enter your heart fully as you let go of resentment and walk towards forgiveness. During this season of Lent, we are remembering that God is our rock. Let us live our lives reminded that no matter what troubles we have, God is our strength. We must continue to remember that as we walk on a prayerful path during Lent, our footsteps should always lead to Jesus. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, Christ in the Arise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. As we gather during Lent, we're supposed to wrestle with our pride, to let go of our pride and embrace the strength that Christ is. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray.
Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, if the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I not rather rejoice than he turns away from his evil that I, he may live? And if the virtuous man turns away from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered. Because he has broken faith and committed sin, because of this he shall die. You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm number 87 in the Gather Book. Number 87 in the Gather Book. <coughs>
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Waha, will be answerable to the sire Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the fires of Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and then recall that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Pride is one of those things that we all have. Pride is that we never want to admit that we're wrong. Pride is saying that it's your fault and not my fault. Or pride could be, I could never do that. How could I ever do that? It's life. Life does that to me. I didn't do anything. Pride is not taking responsibility for our decisions. Sometimes when we make a right decision, we should have a bit of pride saying, yes, I made the right choice and that was a good choice. But when we make the wrong choice, when we make a mistake, when we sin, pride also makes us try to rationalize No, it's not my fault. No, it's my friend's fault. I'm the perfect friend. He's not very good friend. I'm the perfect friend. No, no, it's not my fault. And in both readings today, we are challenged to take responsibility for our mistakes. And the interesting and powerful thing is, is that when we take responsibility for our mistakes, then our mistakes are left behind. But if we do not take responsibility for our mistakes, those mistakes continue to follow us. And many times, a little mistake gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Everybody makes mistakes, but each of us deal with mistakes in a different way. And if we have lots of pride, then we're really going to have a hard time when we make a mistake. If we have lots of pride in our heart, when we sin, we're not going to be able to ask for forgiveness. That's the challenge. That's the test, how our pride is. If we have lots of pride, we're not going to have to ask for forgiveness because we don't think we have to. But if we have a little bit of pride, and that's being human, if we have a little bit of pride, then we realize, I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. I hurt your feelings. Please forgive me. Jesus, I have sinned, and I need you in my life. 
Jesus gives us this incredible example. He's saying that if you're coming and you're coming to prayer, and as you are praying and as you're opening your life up to God, and all of a sudden you realize that you've hurt someone or that your heart is not settled because a sin or a mistake is haunting you, well, don't try to just pray it away. Do something. Go to that person and say, I'm sorry. Look at the mistake that you've made and truly find out how it can be at peace, how it can be reconciled. We all make mistakes, but mistakes don't define us. We all sin, but sin doesn't define us. What defines us is Jesus. We are created in God's image. And when we embrace that beautiful gift of being created in God's holiness, in God's love, then it's not as hard as it seems to say, I'm sorry, I made the wrong choice. Can you give me another chance? I'll try not to do it again. We can't let mistakes paralyze us because when we do, then the mistake becomes bigger and bigger. But when we honestly look a mistake, a sin in the face, directly at it and deal with it, it moves aside and we move forward closer and closer to God. Let us bring our needs before the goodness of the Lord. response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our church, especially Pope Francis, Archbishop Thompson, Father Bill, and Deacon Paul. May they be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the poor, hungry, and homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people who are sick and suffering. May God grant them strength and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of all nations. May they work together for peace and justice. Let us pray to them. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by violence. May they find peace and comfort through God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we pray for the tensions of John Kyle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Gracious God, fill us with your love this Lenten season, that in the midst of walking with Christ, may we truly, truly realize that you are so forgiving, you are so full of mercy. All we need to do is to ask. Give us the strength of your spirit that if we need to seek forgiveness for one, from one another, from a friend, from mom or dad, may we have that ability, that grace, to seek forgiveness. We ask this and all our needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please join in singing, O come, from the, come to the altar from your song sheets. Let us stand around the Lord's altar. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we have, for you have given your children a sacred time for renewing and purifying their hearts that freed from disordered afflictions they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that endure forever. And so with the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful end we acclaim.
You therefore, O mighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and language who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ who said to your Apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the Lord be with you always let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing from your spirit and song book number 420, You Know Who I Am. Number 420 in the spirit and song, also found on your song sheets.
and singing Heal Our Land, found on your song sheets. Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look with favor on your people, O Lord, that with our observance of outwardly declares, it may bring us to salvation, the salvation of Christ, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 142 in your spirit and song. We are marching. Also number, it can also be found in the Cabin book. From number 594.